Dear friends and family in Christ, what a day today is to joyfully celebrate our Savior's resurrection. May this joy fill your heart this day and every day, knowing that He has risen. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that you have defeated sin, you have defeated the devil, and you have defeated our final enemy, death. Help us each day to remember that the battle is yours, that you are always there at our side, always there before us, defending us, guarding us, keeping us, so that one day we might walk with you in newness of life. Lord, we look forward to that day. But until that day, may you guide and direct our steps and our ways that we might honor you and praise you. This we pray in our risen Savior Christ Jesus' name. Amen. The rhythmic hum and hiss of the machines continued on. The rhythmic hum and hiss of the machines kept going as if in time to the rhythmic raising and falling of his chest. His eyes, they stayed shut. Since yesterday afternoon, they'd stayed shut. They hadn't opened again. The sound, the sound of those machines was all that there was. The rhythmic hum, the rhythmic hiss. Death was near. His heart barely able to pump blood through his arteries, to return the blood through his veins. Until finally, the chest raised for the last time and fell for the last time. The eyes fluttered open, but the, there was nothing there, just emptiness. And closed again. And then, the rhythmic hum, the rhythmic hiss, and the loud alarm announcing that death had come. The loud alarm reminding us that death is part of this world. It's very alarming to us to talk about death. We don't like to talk about death, do we? We like to think about the prime of our lives. We like to think about a young child who hits a home run, who eats ice cream, who who is able to say I love you in just that cute little voice. We like to think about how they grow up and they get married and they weep when they hold their first granddaughter. We don't like to think about death. Death is an ugly subject, isn't it? It's something that makes us uncomfortable because we know how it marches on. We know that there is no one who can avoid it, no one who can stand free from it. It is indiscriminate. It will claim you no matter what race or age, no matter what faith you have. It comes as a surprise before we know, before we're ready. It can take a 30-year-old mother with three children or a 102-year-old grandmother who is a widow. It can take someone who is every day healthy and dieting and exercising. It can take someone who is sedentary, who never exercises. All of us, we know, we've come into contact with death, haven't we? We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about it, especially on Easter morning. After all, Easter morning is supposed to be about life. But we all know death. Far too often we've seen it. Sometimes we have our chance to say goodbye. Sometimes Death comes too quickly. Sometimes, sometimes it happens, and we wonder why God allowed that person to hold on so long. Sometimes we can move past it. Sometimes each day is a good day when we haven't thought about it. Death is a painful subject, and we know that. Sometimes we try to redeem it. We try to talk about it as if it's not so bad. We'll say things like it is the gateway to life. But that's not what God calls death. Did you hear right at the end of our reading from 1 Corinthians 15? Death is our enemy. Death, although it is part of our lives now, it was not meant to be part of our natural lives originally. When God created us, when he, when he formed us from the dust of the ground, he pushed the dust together. He breathed into that dust the ruach, the, the life breath. 
joined together body and soul. He knit us together wonderfully. I love how the psalmist puts it in Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. We know that God has made us these wonderful creatures. Creatures who can think. Creatures who can breathe. We're not just like the other animals. But when we see death, we see the tearing apart, the separating of the body from the soul in an unnatural and ugly way. Paul says, Romans 6, chapter 23, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin are death. We began the Lenten season putting ashes upon our foreheads, saying that from the dust of the ground we have come, to the dust we shall return. We know that death is an ugly thing. It is our enemy. But our enemy has been defeated. Our enemy has been defeated. Now we see death all around us. We've attended funerals for those we love, and we say, well, how could our enemy defeat it? When we still see people dying everywhere. Our enemy has been defeated. Because no longer does it mean the end. But in death, we have the promise of life. Christ did not come to redeem death. He didn't come to make everything okay. He came to defeat death, to destroy death, to give us new life. And that is the promise that we celebrate today. The promise that we are not just mere bodies walking around this earth without a hope and without a future, without anything that's coming next. But we look forward to the day that when we die, we will have new life in Christ because he has defeated death. Sometimes it's easy to get burdened by the world, overrun by all the death we see around us. Barely need to open the newspaper, turn on the TV, pull up a story on the internet before you see death. But Christ has given us the promise that he will give us life. Today, we peer at the cross and we see that it's empty. We look inside the empty tomb and we see that Christ did not remain dead, but he did something that no one in history could do, but rose from the grave. He has risen and he has risen for you and he has risen for me. He has defeated death so that we would one day rise with him. And that is the promise that he gives us now and always. It is a promise that we have even when we close our dying eyes, even as we go to be with him. We know that death will not hold us forever. But he has given us a promise that as he has risen, we too shall rise. He says it, Paul, just a little, little later in 1 Corinthians 15. He says it so beautifully. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ and we celebrate our victory today. We celebrate the victory that we are not just going to die and become disembodied spirits who float from cloud to cloud, who play our harps in heaven. And Sorry, Hallmark, but we are going to be given new flesh. When Christ destroys this world, this world of sin, when Christ comes again, he will create a new heaven, a new earth, and he will give us new life, life. new bodies, no longer these weary and tired bodies. No longer these achy and sore bodies, these broken bodies, but new life. And that is what we celebrate. Not just today, but every day. And honestly, we need to do it more. We need to do it more because we li live in a world where death does, where people believe death is the end. Where all they see is a hopeless future they see only sadness and sorrow. We, people of God, we see that there is a hope. There is a future. There is a promise, and it is ours. It is a promise that we will be with our Lord, and that is a promise that we must share, a promise that we must tell others, because otherwise they won't know. They won't know. 
Jesus gives us that command at the end of Matthew. It's a little later than our text for today. He didn't say, celebrate the resurrection, go home and eat cake. He said, celebrate the resurrection and then go tell everyone. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. For surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that is the promise that we have, that as we will we plan and we will join our Lord in heaven, but each day he is also with us. Each day he walks with us. Each day he guides us. Each day he is there. And no matter how many friends we lose, how many family members, no matter how much hurt, no matter how much pain we bear, he is there and he sends his Holy Spirit. Comfort us to remind us of the hope we have in the resurrection. The hope that death did not win. That Satan did not win. That sin did not win. But that Christ has won. He is our champion and he is our victor. He is the risen one. And because he has risen, we too shall rise. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that you have vanquished death, that you have taken the power of sin and the devil. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have called us as your very own and that we do not walk about this world as those without hope, those who have no future, but rather with those who have the hope and promise of salvation. Lead us each day, Lord, that we might cling to this hope firmly, that we might know it's not an empty hope, a, a temporary hope, but it is the hope that one day we will be with you, not as mere disembodied spirits, but made whole again when you rejoin us, body and soul. Lord, may you lead us and guide us that each day, we may celebrate your victory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.